Okay, I'd like to take a look at the 13th strip in this packet. Um, you will see that oh, we have a very erratic baseline here, don't we? Lots of bumps, lots of bumps, lots of bumps. I'm wondering if they're regularly spaced bumps, if those bumps are the same size. So I can take my calipers and let me move this one up here a little bit. Here it is without any interference. Okay. I can take my calipers and I go from here to here to here. Okay. There's a two nice big lumps there. And if I measure that distance, I believe it's a little over five little boxes. Well, and I got two of them here. Wow, and I got three of them over here. Okay way too many to be P waves. Um, too wide to be P waves. Maybe they're flutter. Ooh, maybe. Let's look at our regularity here. Ooh, not very good. Curasses are kind of all randomly placed. But my little bumps here seem to be fairly regular. Um, kind of lost under the T wave, but uh, pretty regular. I'm going to take a stab at the fact that this might be flutter. So. As I showed you in class, take a piece of paper and line it up as close as you can get to the pointiest part of what you think is the flutter wave, in this case the bottoms. And mark on your piece of paper, here's your paper right here, okay? Mark a spot on the paper there and why don't you mark it right on the uh, by the EKG too. Dot here, dot here, dot here, dot here, another 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 one there, another one. Okay, do that for several of them there. Then when you mark them on your piece of paper, if you would then take your piece of paper and slide it over to one way or the direction, one flutter wave, and then you will find your piece of paper is missing a line right here. So mark it on your sheet, on your piece of paper, and then you'll notice that you could, your sheet has a line that doesn't have a flutter wave on the machine, on the uh, paper. Stick one there. Okay, so eventually your paper will have lines on it next to every single flutter wave and it will have one where the flutter wave is obscured by the QRS that you can't see it but it's there because flutter wave does not end it's continuous so now I've got a bunch of marks on my paper here now I'd like to know the ratios so you're going to look for the place where the R to R is the closest for instance in this section right here and where it seems to be the farthest apart, which would be one of these two guys here, either this one or this one. Take your piece of paper that you have those lovely marks on it, line that piece of paper up right with the QRS, the first mark on one of the QRSs. Line it up to the two QRSs, count how many spaces you have between these two R waves. Is it the distance of one flutter, two flutters, or three flutters, if it's three, Write a three, right on your EKG. Line it up again. Take your piece of paper with its markings on it, line one of the markings up to here, and count. Is that one flutter wave, two, three, four, five, and oh, six fit across there. Write a six. Ditto for the other ones. Okay. Your atrial rate looks like there are five little boxes between. Um, flutter wave, so that would be an atrial rate of 300. Um, I did two six second strips and got 60. Do you see my 60 marks? Check that and I got 6 times 10 on that end and I checked this end and I got 6 multiplied by 10. So it's in this, the ventricular rate's in the 60s, atrial rate's in the 300s, atrial, atrial rate is very, very consistent. See my markings right here? I've proved that it's consistent. It's beautiful. My ventricular rate was irregular. QRS width, I would pick any of these three right here because you can see the, the R wave and you can see the S wave here, so that's a nice way of marking that. Um, these, the S waves on this end, kind of go sliding to the right, so it's really kind of tough to see where the QRS ends. Um, so this would be atrial flutter with a 3 to 1 to 6 to 1 ratio.